Thank you. Nice to be here. So I will be speaking about the use of wearables in health promotion and especially we will dive a little deeper in terms, in terms of the data analytics. How to analyze the data to get uh, results for our health. So this is one representation of how our health is being built. And it's been estimated that about 40% of our health is being determined by our lifestyle choices. And uh, of course, then there's an interplay between the lifestyle and genetics and all of the factors. But certainly, lifestyle choices uh, have a big role into our health. And if we think of wearables, the use case of wearables is to help to make those choices in our lifestyle. And if it's a professional athlete in the Olympics, for example, so using data to learn how to train better and how to recover. It's part of the consumer products, wearables, is being able to provide you personalized advice on what to do. Again, using data for you. If it's for employee, making lifestyle choices based on data that help you to improve your health. And certainly, this plays a big role in the, in the, in the overall uh, well-being as, as a society. So, as our background, uh, we have experience in professional sports with about 850 different sports teams. And uh, then we power a lot of consumer products in the market. And the mo most uh, interesting area for us is corporate wellness, where we really work in the, in the preventive healthcare area. And there we have had opportunity to work with about 250,000 uh, employees. So, um, how we look at the world is that we analyze physiological signals, we combine different algorithms, machine learning with physiology databases, and based on this information, we can provide then feedback on how you should improve your lifestyle or, or sports, for example, to get, get uh, better health or higher productivity. And for that, we use heart rate variability as one of the signals. And research is a very important part of that picture, and as it should be for any company working in this area, as uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's really, if it's not based on science, it will just not work. So first, I will make a case of VO2 max, which is fitness level, and uh, why that matters for everyone here in this room. And certainly, those uh, athletes who are now competing at the Olympics, fitness level is a very important parameter to win, win, the, win the competition. But certainly for everyone here who likes to improve your personal fitness, get more fit, so to say, it's good to have a metric for that. It is very much related to our life quality and how we feel and certainly it's related to health, and uh, I will show you. In any case, uh, in terms of wearables, it's possible to estimate this fitness level today without the need to go to laboratory, as it used to be in the past. And then you can get the number in milliliters per kilogram, and how fit are you, in a, how good is your aerobic fitness, and uh, is it improving or decreasing? This is a recent study published, uh, uh, produced by Mayo Clinic, and showing that each one met increase in VO2 max, which is equal to 3.5 milliliters per kilogram, is associated with almost 1,600 um, $1, reduction in healthcare costs. And uh, think about, if you, have, uh, if, you don't have very good, if you don't have very good fitness, it's completely possible to have an improvement of three minutes into your VO2 max and over 10 years, so that's a lot of money, actually. 
And this is only the tip of the iceberg if we think of uh, life quality, and because the healthcare cost is only one part of our um, life quality. Uh, this is uh, another meta analytics study showing that if at the age of 50 your fitness level is in the low level of uh, 26 milliliters, your actual chance of dying is 70% higher than if you have an average fitness level. So certainly uh, fitness level is not only about elite sports. And yet another meta-analytics showing an unfortunate truth that when we get more age, when we get older, our fitness level tends to decrease. That's uh, unfortunate in an average level. And, but here, at, let's say at the age of 50, if we have a relatively low fitness level, it's completely possible to get an increase of 20% to our fitness level there by starting to do a little bit more exercise. And if we do that, then we get to increase our fitness level by this 20%. It means that it takes 20 more years until we will be in a, in a, in a low level, back again in a low level, which will then impair our daily, uh, daily life, basically. So the claim here is that 20% more fitness at the age of 50, it means 20 more years of quality life. And I think that's a good pitch. Obviously, if you like to, inv if you inv no matter in which stage you are, if you invest on your, on your physical activity, it's very nice to see some results that this, uh, this uh, investment is producing results, so that you will get to see the increase as, as a part of your activity. And these are, these are some uh, three examples of new products that were announced in CES in Vegas in, in January, which all have this fitness level feature as part of, part of the devices. Another use case I will show is employee wellness checks. And this is an area we have ex especially gained uh, experience here in, uh, in the Nordic countries. And so basically, um, it's, been, it's been estimated that, and, and shown also that preventive healthcare can be uh, five to 10 times uh, less costly than the reactive type of healthcare. And it's been also estimated that in US, Australia and UK alone, if the cost of not being at work is 150 billion, the cost of being at work but not productive is 1500 billion, so 10 times more. So, uh, that's, um, so there's a lot to gain in, 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 in a working life from being healthier. And how we have gained some data is through this lifestyle assessment service uh, from which you get to identify your stress, your recovery, and is your physical activity improving your health. This has been done to about 250,000 persons, so we have some, some data there. And basically, for example, showing how your recovery goes. So there's the battery, first you lose your energy, then you gain energy, and, and, and what's, the, what's the balance there? So basically, to educate people on their stress management and on their recovery, because all of us, we need to recover at some, some point. And it's not only about the use of wearables and use of data and analytics, it's also about coaching. The service includes a one-to-one -one coaching session, and which is very important to identify which factors to change in your lifestyle. So it's a combination of wearables, analytics, and coaching. And the coaching is a very important part of that. And these are some of the corporates that's been using this and um, for different purposes. And uh, so we have experience in wellness and performance coaching and physical activity guidance. Uh, there's a corporate wellness programs, on-site uh, health programs, and then also as a part of uh, annual health checks. And about the results. So, um, 
more than, frequently more than 90% of the employee like this service, which is pretty important. So, so the employee actually like the service and, and they would recommend that for others. If the employee would, would not recommend that for others, it would be very hard to do this kind of services anyway, basically, without the, without the motivation there. And uh, as, a, as an uh, average employee has made about three uh, different uh, lifestyle uh, intention to make three different choices, and more than 80% has been frequently being able to deliver those choices, at least in, in, a, in a short term. And um, the, there are some, there are some, um, some follow-up studies showing uh, quite, uh, quite interesting reduction in healthcare costs. Cost and um, and, uh, and and so so this seems to seems to work quite well in in all different um, kinds of industries. And then more specifically, we will look at the stress issue, which is very uh, very important issue. And in terms of stress, when we measure stress using a wearable device and data, it's about the balance between stress and recovery. And so this is an example of a stressed executive. And you can see that the, so the red is stressed there. And he's having stress all the time, basically, at work. And he's, uh, he or she is continuing work at the evening as well. And uh, then at sleep, the stress continues. There's no recovery, almost no recovery at all. And this kind of going with this kind of a profile and lifestyle, it's certainly not going to end well unless there are some changes to be made. So basically learning data, learn, learn, learning from your personal stress levels and recovery that something needs to be done. And this is um, another example. This is a night shift worker and uh, uh, being at work at night it's, uh, he's having uh, stress there, and we can also see that that does impair the ability to recover at night. Night, which can be a challenging. And uh, in this case, there's, uh, there's a lot of physical activity, which again does impair uh, recovery at night. And uh, this is a similar example from a person that does demanding physical work. And, uh, that, uh, and he's not capable of uh, coping with that. So, okay, these are a little bit uh, uh, bad examples. There's plenty of good examples as well in terms of recovery. But the idea really is to see how, what works for every one of us. We are all different. We have a different life situation. We have different work and our physiologies are a little bit different as well. So how do I recover? How do you recover? And what method of recovery in your lifestyle works for you personally? And that's very close to the idea of wearables. In general, how we can create value is letting you to understand what works for you. So learning from data. And that's, that's, the, so that's the idea. Identifying what is a good way for you to recover. Then um, I will talk a little bit about use of data to learn and uh, what we can perhaps learn from the pro sports and what, what kind of learning we can do from, from, uh, from our employee population. So these are some of the teams that have been using, using uh, wearable, wearable uh, systems and analytics to improve the team performance. At an, it's, it's, so it both works at an individual level, at the team level, and basically looking at the load of each player, because all athletes, they are different in their capabilities, in, in terms of their situation, and, uh, and also the recovery side. So in the same way as uh, all of us, we need recovery, and that does also apply for the elite sports. Okay, we have a little bit of similar metrics also for, for every one of us. And uh, looking at, of, of, course we are, of course, the parameters are at a different level than they would be for, for athletes. 
And uh, for example, this graph shows, this is based on a Finnish population of more than 100,000 persons, shows quite clearly that the more fit you are, the more physical activity you do, the less stress you have in your body, and the less stress also you feel that you have. So basically, fitness level again helps you to recover better from stress. It provides you resilience at work. And this is um, another graph uh, showing that uh, Mondays and Tuesdays are the days that we have uh, best recovery. Sundays are also pretty good. So the days are from the low, from the, uh, at the horizontal axis, Monday to Sunday. And generally, we have the worst recovery actually on Saturday. So that's, uh, well, the solution may not be that let's just, uh, let's just not have weekends, but, but anyway, Saturdays, uh, there's a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, lot of uh, things happening there that impair our recovery. And uh, also, um, if we look at from a monthly side, so, so we know that uh, actually December 21st, that's the most stressful day of the year. Just before Christmas, everybody is getting a little bit crazy, it seems, and <laughs> feels. And, uh, but this time of the year, actually, we have among the best uh, recovery in, in overall. overall. And uh, of course, there are individual differences. And, but again, those people, a little bit better fitness level, they are more capable of, of, of handling stress in the longer term. And this is a relationship between alcohol and, uh, uh, and recovery. And from the graph, we can see that, um, let's say, after two doses of alcohol, the amount of recovery starts to decrease quite rapidly. And uh, actually, after six doses, it really doesn't matter anymore. It's already quite bad. So it's not an advice. Don't take this as an advice. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but so certainly, um, alcohol does impair our, our ability to recover at night. And this is, some, this is some, something that we see quite often as a part of our, our services. Again, uh, this is uh, recovery. Recovery at sleep and showing that if you have a, the better fitness you have, the more capable of recovering at sleep you are as well. And the more uh, higher level, per energy level you feel as a, as a subjective level. Stress, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's very much related to a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, chronic conditions. Conditions through uh, neuroendocrine responses, sympathetic nervous system activity, and, uh, and of course, often if you are in a high stress, that's also coupled with unhealthy lifestyle behaviors, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, uh, so stress is a very critical factor in, for example, preventing uh, diabetes and other chronic conditions. So that's a very, um, so that's a major concern. So, What's the role of wearables in the in the in the healthcare in in wellness and um, and as a, in our society? So the core use of wearables and wearable data is to individualize things to understand what's happening for you. Anyways, if we are not using that data data to learn about you, it's uh, I mean why, why bother doing the measurement at all? You can just read it from the from the from the web or something. It's about learning what to do, what works for us, what helps us to improve our health, and uh, to educate people on base of data again, uh, really show what happens in your body. And uh, it's certainly about quantifying changes, condition, where we are using data to guide us, gu guide us and uh, making uh, Invisible, visible. So showing things on our lifestyle, on, on our health, our well-being. Are we going in the right direction to again come come back to help us to learn how to live healthier, happier? And certainly, once we make changes, uh, it's is to confirm, 
that these changes do have an effect and uh, adjust when needed to provide guidance what to do and uh, certainly about motivation as well because uh, what we have learned that often seeing seeing data and uh, in an understandable meaningful way it helps you to uh, it really helps to make start making changes and that's uh, that's it thank you